again and welcome. Today I'm going to be turning a vase from a piece of ash and this piece of ash here um, I cut from a tree that was downed in a storm uh, and I cut it from the tree um, in August of 2014 which is just a little over 18 months ago. Uh, it wasn't totally wet because I think it had come down a few months before I cut it. However, um, I checked it this morning and it's around 12% moisture so it's okay to turn and it's about 11 and a half inches long by five and a half inches across. Um, I'm going to leave a little bit of bark on the end. I might have a lip on um, a natural edge on the lip. I'm not sure yet. I'm not even sure the shape it's going to be. Uh, we'll see as it gets on the lathe. A point of um, an aside, if you like, if this was going to be a goblet, which obviously it wouldn't be, it's a big bit of wood, um, the one of the things with goblets is that it's always nice if you're using limb wood to try and get the uh, pith not going down the um, center of the wood, uh, 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 of the stem because obviously that could split and ruin your goblet. So you either would offset it a bit so that the pith doesn't run right down the stem. In this case this is an ideal piece of wood for a goblet because the red circle there if you can see it is where the pith area is, is where the pith is, and the cross is where the centre of the log is. And similarly on the other side, uh, the pith is the red circle, the cross is the centre of the log. So the stem would actually not include any of the pith. The pith would only be in the bowl part of the goblet and the foot. So the, the stem would be solid, which is always good for goblets. Just a little point for newer turners out there when you're turning goblets. Try and avoid the pith or not include the pith in the whole length of the stem. Okay, back to vases. Um, I'll be putting this in between the centres, taking the bath bark off apart from the edge on one side to see if I might want to keep that on, um, and then hollowing it out and I'll be using Paul Crabtree's Hollowing King, and there might be an opportunity to also use the steady rest that I built a couple of months ago. Okay, so we'll go over to the lathe now and we'll start working on this piece of ash to make a vase. Right, the lathe now, I've got this uh, chunk of ash um, between centres. Um, I'm going to be using my one and a half inch uh, roughing gouge to remove the bark. I'm not, as I say, sure whether or not I'm going to be leaving the bark on. I have a glove on, the reason being it's a fingerless glove, tight fitting. I don't normally wear them. I don't like wearing gloves very much because it, you lose that little bit of touch. However, it's going to just protect the back of my hand. And a full face shield, as always. Start the lathe off at um, its lowest speed and work your way up until you start to get a bit of vibration. Just starting now, back it off a little bit. And we're starting off at about 650 revs. Okay. Just with a little bit of uh, roughing, I can turn it up now to a thousand revs, which will make the cutting a much nicer experience. Just square off the the very end. <coughs> and now we'll form the tenon. Now we'll put that into the chuck and I'll come back. Well, as, as quite often happens when you're doing projects like this, I've had a complete change of plan. I, I'm very, very fond of all this, this, this bark here that's um, coming into the piece. So I think it might be rather a straight piece flaring out here. I mean, I've lost the bark here, obviously, most of it. So it doesn't go down much further now and then we'll go we'd be into the sort of the heartwood as it were so I'm going to play around with it as I go and I'm going to use a wire brush here to see how solid all this bark is and uh, I think we might have a bit of a, a change of plan into the design but we'll just see how things develop
so I think I've got the final shape I want on the outside. Um, just need sanding now, and then I can hollow hollow out the inside. So I won't bore you with the sanding, and I'll come back when I'm prepared, ready to hollow. <laughs> 